Hi guys, how are you? Welcome back. Let's do another one. Stump the chump. <laughs> Save the tape. <laughs> uh, these experts, man. These experts with their fucking models, you know. All right. Uh, again, personally, I don't care about any of them. I don't listen to them. I. <laughs> Uh, but you do. I don't mean you, but whoever is listening uh, does listen to these people. And they always have this um, this arrogance of knowing, right? It's the crystal ball. It's the, I am an expert. It's, uh, well, the public doesn't know this, but hey, let me give you this little secret. Uh, it's the mental game. You know, it's, I'm tougher than you are. Um, you know, all these crazy people. And when I, when I spot bullshit, uh, and I can see it, then, you know, I'm going to expose it. Not so much to expose them. I don't care about them. It's to expose them to you. So you know how to analyze what they are saying a lot better. Now, having said that, just because they are wrong is not the problem. Fuck, I'm wrong all the time. Every, there's no way that anybody can for, forecast the future. The problem is, is that they pretend that they can forecast the future. That's the problem. You you understand that they have the crystal ball, that they they have the the insight that you little people don't have, and they're gonna come out and make these predictions, shotgun predictions, like Peter Schiff, right? Just keep throwing shit up against the wall, see what sticks, and then just run with the with the ones that do stick, and forget about all the other ones. Now Logan here never ever saw COVID coming. Problem one. Problem two. He never saw the economic depression that was coming. Not once. In fact, I have a copy paste somewhere, I don't know where, where he's tweeting like, hey, I just opened up my front door and I'm looking out and hey, everything looks normal to me. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. Right? He was making fun of COVID, in fact. Not only he didn't see it, but he was making fun of it. Now, I am not a real estate guy. I am not an expert in real estate. I don't sell real estate. I don't sell mortgages. I don't do any of that stuff. Um, he does. So he is the expert. He is the one that's going to give you the insight, the, at least that r when it comes to real estate. He should know what he's talking about, at least more than me. But that's not the case, is it? And you're going to hear that now, all right? This, is, this interview was conducted back on April 9th, 2021. So let's listen to what he's got to say. Interview. You've been writing um, about the mortgage market meltdown. Where are we right now? How did we get here? What's going on? Well, we're kind of... Okay, sorry, I pushed the wrong pause. Let me go back a little bit. The mortgage crisis meltdown... The mortgage market meltdown. Mortgage market. There was no meltdown. There was no meltdown. But he was writing about it. And of course, this guy, this guy's job is to, you know, bait, uh, clickbait and to perform, you know, uh, entertainment for everybody. But there was no meltdown. Where are we right now? How did we get here? What's going on? Well, we're kind of still in the chaotic stage right now. Um, you know Leave it there. That's it. That's, <laughs> that's the interview. Shut it off. Thank you very much. Goodbye. That's right. We are in the chaotic stage right now. That's it. That's the, the only insight that you can possibly fucking provide. That's it. That, that's all you're capable of, of, of accurately saying to the people. We don't know. That's it. Walk away. But that's not what he does. So listen to the rest of the interview. You know, when March 9th came in and the 10-year yield got down to about 32 basis points and mortgage rates fell with it, uh, the first thing that came to my mind is uh, early payoff uh, uh, risk, which means that uh, refinances would accelerate. Uh, it would cost the industry a lot of money because, you know, if you're providing a good example is if you're giving $10,000 to give somebody an interest rate, you need to keep that loan on the books for at least 18 months to, to break even or make money. And basically all the loans in 2019 and even 2020 were at risk of having an early payoff. And that... Okay, early payoff. Um, do you want to see <laughs> what tw the great financial crisis look like? By that, la by that logic, okay, as interest rates were collapsing, 
on the 10 year uh, from 2008 to 2010 that should have been the same uh, the same problem it should have been uh, chaotic for the banking it's over it's done game over but that wasn't the case was it do you know why that's not the case let me explain to you why that's not the case because of this this is why you see banks they they pay interest on two years or less okay and make loans on 10 years or more when this happened the risk of oh we're gonna pay out early blah 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 all this stuff it goes out the window because this is the profit margin right here that's the higher this is the more profit you're making he should have been saying that back here <laughs> when the 10 and the twos were inverted that's when the problem was not now not now not when the when the fed pumped in all this all, all this this money okay and this this occurred this occurred on february 24th this big spike here it happened on february 24th this is april 9th and he's still talking about lower interest rates uh, early payouts and blah 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 he doesn't understand banking I'm sorry, he doesn't. This ratio does not care where interest rates are, so long as there's enough spread for uh, banks to make money. All right, that's what matters. And remember, you have you have all this loans, okay? And then, oops, let me redo this again. Come on, you have all these loans in here all in here you made all these loans over the years okay and then you're worried about a little drop on these loans that occurred over the last 18 months or whatever you're making money off of all these loans back here you know this is just a small little blip so <laughs> he doesn't understand in fact if you go back to um what's the date here April 6th, three days before he even made this video. I posted this on TradingView. Endless trillions for all. That's it. They're going to unleash the floodgates of fucking hell on, uh, on, um, of dollars into the, the economy. Now, I screwed up because I didn't trade it right. Different story, right? But uh, it's not rocket science that they're going to start pumping in endless of trillions of dollars to, to everything and anything that moves. And what, they're going to skip over banking? <laughs> I mean, are you serious? Right? And look what happened since. And he's talking about, oh, yeah, there's not enough money. Yeah, you know, they can't take these losses. What are you talking about, dude? You student of the market, you? <laughs> Here, take a look at this one. It's unfortunate that uh, TradingView has banned this, this, um, um, this post that I made. And this is on April 19th. Okay, this is two weeks after I posted uh, Endless Trillions for All. And the reason they, they banned it is because I had Patreon.com slash Real Macro. And I wasn't supposed to. Whatever. It's a shame because people should be able to see this because it was a great call at the time. And it was a follow-up to the initial Endless tr Trillions for All, which was, which was this one back here. Okay? Uh, and this one was on April 2nd when, when I posted this. Uh, and then, you know, subsequently you can see that, you know, it popped up dramatically. Um, but again, what, he didn't know it? Well, if he didn't know that, if he didn't know that the government was going to come in and start pumping in endless of trillions of dollars to everybody, then he's got no business talking about macroeconomics uh, and the economy as a whole. Okay? He's got no business. And yet he does. He does. Uh, the Fed came and asked him how his model works. Uh, you know, he's on Bloomberg and he's given stupid analysis to everybody. These are all cute storytellers. That's all they do is run around, uh, sell a story that ever, whatever everybody believes at the time, and that's it. And then he says, yeah, America is great since 1776, rah, 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 and everything is wonderful. But that's, that's not an analysis. That's a cute story. And it frustrates the hell out of me when I see people like this getting... You know, all, all this uh, followings and whatever, uh, and, and people don't understand that this guy is, he's clueless, right? He's clueless. He's a perma bull 
because the market goes from the bottom left to the top right, so therefore it'll continue to do that, and therefore whatever I say, I'm going to end up looking right. That's all he's doing. He certainly doesn't understand macroeconomics, the monetary system, banking. <laughs> I don't even think he understands uh, real estate. I just think he's a great storyteller. Anyway, let's continue. You know, as a financial burden, then, you know, the, the mortgage rates were moving so much that you had margin call risk. And these are things that aren't really familiar to the general public. So you had two. Oh, you know, I did, yeah, this stuff, it's not familiar to the general public. It's inside information that, hey, I'm just kind of like letting you know that there's margin call. Well, no fucking shit. <laughs> uh, oh, wow. That's that's just so insightful. Really insightful. Let me show you something about credit. Look at credit. Look at credit in 2008 all the way to 2000 and um, what is it, 11 to the bottom, 10, almost 11, right? Why wasn't there margin call then? This little bleep here is going to be the margin call? Please. Well, the public doesn't know that, but hey, I'll kind of share that with you, big guy. Ugh. Cringy stuff, cringy stuff. Who hits right now on the mortgage side of the equation? And then, as always, whenever a recession is here, and it was March 12th, you can see that was the last day we had good uh, jobless claims data. So March 12th was the last day we had uh, good... Uh, jobless claim data. Okay, let's go through this one one more time. The U.S. entered a recession in February. Okay, his little six-point model had to wait all the way to March to start showing that, hey, you know, <laughs> maybe the unemployment data is not that good. Yeah, because we entered a recession in February pre-COVID. Pre-COVID. Not post, pre all right. <laughs> so if you're waiting a month later to say, hey, we're in recession, too late, done. The market had already tanked by March 6th. OK, and then just kept on going. So, uh, again, no, he'll tell you, well, you know, I don't I'm not talking about stocks, but he'll every time the stock market goes up, he'll be the first one to see. Look at the stock market is going up. See, I told you. Ha 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 ha. And then when it goes against them, well, I'm not talking. About, I'm not talking about the economy. Yeah, <laughs> the economy was screwed on February, not March, April, and May. But again, you know, uh, I make the silly sounds and the silly, <laughs> silly stuff only because to me they they are that silly. These people, they are just ridiculous. But you know, people are like, oh my God, you know, Logan knows what he's talking about. He's an expert. He doesn't even know his fucking ass from his elbow. Credit tightens up as well. So you're getting hit on multiple sides. And just to add another layer, the fourth one is that the servicers are going to be at risk because of the forbearance. You know, the forbearance was open to the to the public in general, and they don't really have enough capital to uh, to take that money, that much uh, uh, um, payment that they have to give to the bondholders on top of that. So you have four significant factors all coming into the mortgage market in a matter of weeks. And this is why we see this credit stress. This is why mortgage rates went up. Uh, you know, that first week of March 9th, you know, rates actually went up 1% uh, that entire, those five days. So there's just a lot of stress right now in the mortgage market. And some of these things are gonna be with us uh, even if the economy recovers in Q4 and people go out and, you know, uh, can walk the earth again, I still think the the, the credit tightening is going to be here for a while. Yeah. How wrong was he? Wow. How wrong was he? Even in Q4. <laughs> How wrong was he? Credit tightening? Pfft, my ass. Nope. Supply is falling. So it doesn't matter what... Um, uh, what credit does, right? Because, first of all, the government is going to come in and it's going to pump it up, right? And then look at the supply. Where was the supply when all this hit, hit? Right? Barely five months. Barely. Then you got a spike and then a drop and then this is where we are now. Where are prices? All-time highs, right? What happened to all the credit stress? It hasn't even hit. It's not even close. Wait wait till uh, supply starts to spike up, uh, interest rates start to spike up, uh, and home prices start falling. Then we're going to start talking about 
credit stress. But who, who in their right mind is going to go out in a, in a period of uncertainty uh, and start to, uh, to sell homes, right? you got to be a little crazy. Uh, oh, fuck it, I'm, I'm selling my home. No, the only reason this happened is because they didn't have a choice. That's why this happened here. Was anybody in uh, 2000 running out and uh, selling homes? No. In fact, back then, the average uh, supply of homes were about four, per, uh, uh, four million. I'm sorry, four months. Four million. Four months. Okay, exactly where we are now. This was just a real estate crisis that ended up, you know, dumping supply into the into the economy. You go back into the um, into the 80s. And yeah, there was a lot of supply because interest rates were so high to go buy a home, right? That's when the great credit expansion started. And interest rates were freaking, you know, like 18%. Yeah, good luck, you know, renting a, I'm sorry, uh, getting a mortgage like that. Um, so in this post world of, you know, hey, easy money for everybody, nobody in their right mind is going to go out and, and, um, and sell uh, their home uh, if they don't know if they're going to have a job next week, right? So... Keep that stuff in mind. Credit tightening. What? This is credit tightening? This little blip here? Bullshit. <laughs> it barely budged. This is a nice, long, prolonged credit tightening here. Right? Total consumer credit owned and securitized outstanding. Right? That's more impactful than this little blip here. Or this little blip. Again, I don't mind that he's wrong. That There's nothing... Based on whatever he was seeing at the time, okay, this is what I see, you know, I'm wrong, whatever. Okay, fine. <laughs> There's no problem with being wrong. But when you come out and you start playing this, well, you know, the general public doesn't know this. And, uh, you know, America's great, and I'll tell you about economics and all this stuff. And start making predictions uh, based on uh, certainty, right? Then, and, and you claim you're an expert, then, then there's a problem with that. I got a big problem with that. And that's why I always say, likely to happen, this is the direction it's heading, this is, because I, I don't know. And believe me, <laughs> nobody knows. It's not possible to know. Nobody has a crystal ball. That's why models don't work. You look at this stupid little America is back, economic model update part three. And this was in August uh, 15th, right? takes a picture of him, uh, go, goes out, and he's like, hey, honey, can you please take a picture? I'll be on the podium, and it, it can look like I'm talking to somebody. America is back. For America to be back, first you have to say America was gone, and he never saw America, you know, gone. <laughs> he just kept going, hey, America is great. You know, COVID, don't worry about it. I'm looking outside my door. Everything looks normal. Everything is great. And now he has a third model now on how to, you know, pick a... a uh, an economic model now. He's got a third one. Yeah, everybody has a fucking economic model after the fact. After the fact, everybody has a model. Everybody's an expert. Before, before, I want to see you before. I want you to show me your portfolio. I want you. I want to see where your money is going. I want to see at least you make the calls. Then we can talk. Till then, Habibi, <laughs> you're a joke. You are a joke. You've always been a joke. You always will be a joke. And you're just another cute storyteller, uh, entertainer, uh, pretending that you are something that you're not. That's it. That's all you are, Logan. All right. I'm not going to do too much longer. I've already spent 18 minutes ranting about this guy. But let's just listen a little bit more, and then we'll, we'll wrap it up. Yeah, that you you paid, you paid a kind of bleak picture. So let's, let's walk through... <laughs> Paint a pretty bleak picture. Can you imagine somebody saying that to Logan? <laughs> He's a perma bull. Anyway, let's listen. Those one at a time and just explain a little bit about what the context is and why it matters so much. Well, first of all, the non QM side. Non QM uh, loans are basically loans that aren't uh, guaranteed uh, by the government. So they're a little bit out of the box. Now, they're nothing like what we saw during the housing bubble. These aren't uh, 80, 10, 10 option arm loans, loans that are gonna re- Yeah, you know, you know the QMs and the 80, 10, 10 loans. That's the ones we're talking about here, yeah. Uh, well, you know, um, <laughs> do you know what a QM is? Qualified mortgage, uh, 80, 10, 10, you know what that is? <laughs> All right. 
why why does it talk in this jargon that's like me going to my passengers being like yeah well you know the yellow hydraulic accumulator pressure has been dropping all day long and therefore uh, we're going to be uh, servicing this uh, prior to takeoff. We may have to swap uh, aircrafts. We're going to be taking the uh, JB-102 uh, instead of the JB-103, uh, provided that it's available according to dispatch. Could you imagine me talking like that to passengers? They would shoot me. They would be like, what the hell is this guy talking about? And again, it's this, you know, well, I'm the expert. I'm the expert. All right? <laughs> because the Y hydraulic accumulated pressure is dropping. And, you know, as we were uh, coming in, uh, we got the, um, uh, the, um, the Amber, uh, we got the, uh, Amber, uh, landing gear shock absorber fault. Uh, so we have to, uh, check that out as well. And that's why I think we're going to the, uh, JB 102, uh, possibly. So, God. We cast, uh, on you and create a, for a foreclosure. Uh, these are just a little bit out of the box in terms of bank statement loans. Those kind of things, especially in the jumbo market, are gone for the most part. It's very little. I think that market gets hit. Uh, FHA lending, which, you know, below 620, which isn't that big either. Uh, the credit standards have... Uh... These are such small percentages of overall mortgages. Why is he even talking about it? Who cares if they got hit? Who cares? Nobody cares. All right? Nobody cares about these things. But... Again, it's him. You know, look at me. I'm an expert. You know, let's talk about QM and the 80-10-10 and the FHA. And they're gone now. They're finished. You know, it's small, but, you know, they're finished. Well, if they're small, don't talk about them. It's insignificant. doesn't matter. Anyway, that that's it for this video. I, I, I can't, honestly, this, this goes on for 52 minutes. I would be here for days uh, just making fun of them. Don't listen to these people, man. Seriously, don't listen to these people. Uh... I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Just don't listen to him. It's a year later, flat out wrong on everything. Not the problem that he's wrong. The problem is that he pretends he's the expert and he can forecast the future, and he can't. Okay? Uh, it's that simple. Nobody can. It's impossible. So anybody who's sitting here telling you, well, this is how it is, don't listen to him. All right. Take care, guys. Have a good day. Bye-bye.